Hello everyone. I am really happy to be here with all of you today. My name is Elizabeth Mosser. I am the Associate Dean for Academic Operations here at Harvard Community College, and I have the distinct pleasure of being the moderator for our session this afternoon. So we're going to walk through some of the um, programs and opportunities within academic affairs at HCC. Um, so even though we have kind of a yucky rainy day out, we have this wonderful virtual space to be in and to talk with some of our faculty and deans about all of these wonderful opportunities. Um, before we get started, before we go through some of the, the panel and have the discussion, I just have a, a few kind of housekeeping points. So the first one is to know that this session is being recorded and will be available online at harford.edu slash learn more. So that's all one word, learn more. Um, and this is also a place where you can go and both students and, and parents potentially get all the information that you would need to begin your journey here at HCC. Just know that it uh, won't be posted until after all of these sessions happen, so a little bit later this week, let's say. There's also a chat feature in the right-hand toolbar. Um, it's available throughout the session, so you can ask questions, and we'll be monitoring it, and we'll be able to make sure that your question gets to the right panelist. And then we actually have, like I said, multiple sessions happening. So this one right now is going to be a little bit on our credit programs, but we have some wonderful workforce programs that will be talked through later this evening and actually information about Towson University Northeast, which we call TUNE, a little bit later as well. Login um, is the same, so you can continue to, to join us throughout the day or throughout the actually the evening. Um, so without further ado, I would like to invite our Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Tim Sherwood, to give us some opening remarks. Welcome to all. I'm Dr. Tim Sherwood, the Vice President for Academic Affairs at Harvard Community College, and I welcome you to this virtual open house. I'm so great that you so grateful that you tuned in to learn more about the college and learn about the educational experiences that the college provides. One thing to know, as a community college, our goal is to provide the resources that our community needs. That means the resources that you need. We want to help you to meet your educational goals, whether they be to get to, get to a transfer to a four-year institution, um, whether they are to get a job, or just for personal enrichment. These are the main areas of which we fill our, our provide educational opportunities to students and are really looking forward to helping you do that. Um, I know that nobody comes to the college for me, but they do come to the college for great curriculum and great faculty. And we do have wonderful instructors that really care about students and really want to provide you know, have a personal relation with them and provide the educational experience that helps you learn. Really, when you think about this education, it does fall into those three buckets. And I did talk about, you know, transfer courses, which are the first part of the evening is talk about transfer education. Our transfer courses are designed to uh, transfer uh, as equivalent courses to those taught at four-year institutions. So those courses at a four-year institution that line up in the first two years of their curriculum. Those are what we teach here at Harvard Community College. We provide those resources in very small class settings, 30 and under, um, to help students learn. There's very good specialized attention with high-tech equipment where we have experiential learning um, to help folks learn and get really high quality instruction. So if you're an individual that doesn't like college and you're worrying about being put into a very large 100 plus student classroom, that's not the experience you get from us. Our experience is personalized and helpful to you as a student. It works for both traditional and non-traditional students. We want to make sure that you know, we have night classes that work for folks that work from nine to five, and we have day classes for folks that want to have that more traditional experience. Um, we also um, think about courses that help you, you know, leverage your employment where you're at now. And some of those you know, business courses and computer courses, you know, are very helpful to folks who want a credit experience, but you know, also have a job right now. So there are lots of ways that the college helps. We also have many courses that you know that contribute to a four-year education, but also double as enrichment experiences for our community. So 
there are things in terms of humanities and arts that really help enrich um, the education and, uh, and thoughts of folks uh, in the, the community. So with no further ado, I'd like to turn it over to our great faculty and staff to talk about the educational experiences. Excellent. Thank you so much, Dr. Sherwood. We appreciated that introduction very much. And so I'm actually going to now turn it over to Dr. Pamela pape our Dean for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math, or STEM. Talk to us a little bit about um, what folks can get involved in if they're interested in computers, math, and data. Good evening. Um, welcome to students and parents of students. Um, as, as Beth mentioned, I'm Dr. Pamela pape I'm the Dean of STEM here at the college. Um, my background is in biology. I uh, was a biology faculty for a long period of time and so have a lot of experience teaching in the classroom. And I've been um, asked to talk to you about careers and opportunities in computers, um, math, and, and data. Um, it has been said that the best predictor of future income is the amount of mathematics learned in school. Um, mathematics is an important language. It's how we convey information. Um, and I think, you know, we've seen with our current COVID-19 situation, uh, people's understanding to uh, distinguish the difference between an exponential curve and a logistic curve um, is important. Uh, mathematics and modeling um, and simulation of data has been a very important um, aspect of, of the information sharing um, during this time. So math teaches critical thinking skills um, and problem solving approaches and is relevant to um, everyday life and, and many different careers. So here at the college, um, Dr. Sherwood mentioned that we have, we have credit programs um, and that result in transfer degrees. And we also have certificate programs um, around these areas of, of computers, math, and data. Uh, so we have degrees in um, computer information systems here at the college. We have a number of cybersecurity opportunities and, and um, the new P-TECH High School that is going to be offering um, high school students an opportunity to earn some cybersecurity credentials. We have computer science degrees as well. Uh, Beth mentioned the Towson University. So um, I have been uh, in conversation with faculty at Towson University and they have a specific program that they are currently developing um, for students so that they can earn their uh, two-year degree at Hartford Community College and then transfer to Towson and finish their four-year degree at Towson and be credentialed to teach both math and computer science um, at the high school level. And, and so that is something that we've been working on with um, faculty at, at Towson University. I want to talk a little bit about our um, engineering program here at the college and that has been an area of emphasis for us um, as many of you know uh, one of the largest employers in our county is um, the Aberdeen Proving Ground and so there's lots of opportunity for students that have credentials um, in, in engineering um, to, to gain employment um, you know very close to home. So our engineering program is, is um, a little bit different than what you might experience if you went to a large state school right off the bat. As, as Dr. Sherwood mentioned, one important advantage to the community college experience is a small, um, small classroom. And so our engineering courses have anywhere from 15 to 24 students uh, with our faculty. Um, there's very much an emphasis on hands-on projects. Um, last year, our students worked with Professor Lisa Ovalman um, to build a scale model house for FEMA, so the Federal Emergency Management um, Agency. Uh, uh, co-sponsored a project where our students worked on um, constructing a house that would be able to um, withstand hurricane force winds. This was a, a model, a house built to, to scale. And so that's a great example of the types of hands-on projects that our engineering students um, can be involved with. So I, I mentioned um, Lisa Ovalman, um as one of our engineering faculty, and she's very involved with our students. Um, she works very closely with them in student clubs. Our engineering club is, is very active. 
We also are proud to announce um, Dr. Bill Stevens has recently joined our engineering program, and he has um, a PhD in electrical engineering from the University of, of Southern um, California and has been working closely with faculty at the four-year schools um, so that we can revamp our uh, um, electrical engineering courses so that we can have the transfer equivalencies um, for our engineering courses that Dr. Sherwood was um, mentioning earlier. Um, the last area that I want to highlight just a little bit is, is data science. So we have, um, we have big data programs at the college, we have data analytics opportunities, and we are currently developing new um, data science courses, data science curriculum. I think that most people are aware that um, all fields of um, very diverse fields from healthcare, um, you know, it's generating lots of data, um, economics, business. So, so every time you use your credit card or shop at the grocery store, um, that is generating data, especially if you're using your little, you know, discount card at the grocery store. And that's sometimes called your data exhaust, your, your, your data trail. And so um, all um, areas of, you know, business, healthcare, et cetera, are going to need um, employees that are skilled in, in data analysis, data presentation, and data interpretation. And so that is another um, great opportunity that is coming up um, for our students here at um, Harford Community College. So I have focused my conversation on um, computers, math, and data. Um, I have not said a lot about other STEM programs, such as um, chemistry or biology. We do have a question and answer session at the end, and happy to take your questions. And you can alternatively also um, email stem at harford.edu if you have specific questions. And with that being said, I'm going to turn this back over to Beth Mosser. Thank you so much. Excellent. Thank you, Dr. Papelinstrom. Um, at this time, I'll actually ask Professor Nicolette Krenzian to speak a little bit about um, areas within education and social sciences. Nicolette is one of our amazing psychology faculty, so she's going to take us through some of those interests. Hello, everyone. My name is Nicolette Krenzian, and I am a professor of psychology at Harvard Community College. So I figured the best way to run through this would be to go through the many different majors that we offer in behavioral and social sciences. So starting off, we have the community health program, which works to promote health in our community, specifically Harford. One thing I wanted to mention with this program is there is a big emphasis on using technology in the classroom. So that includes the use of iPads, as well as creating digital books for projects. The next major on our list is criminal justice. And the main focus of criminal justice includes criminology, policing, and legal studies. So in this area, we do also have recently been given the gift of a brand new criminal justice lab that could be used for students to work on their field studies and hands-on activities. Following that, we have exercise science, which is actually a brand new major in behavioral and social sciences. So it could be pretty exciting to join that major. It is perfect for individuals who would like to become personal trainers or work with group fitness classes. Okay, following that is general studies, which is a fairly big major but is perfect for students who are not quite sure what field they may be most interested in. So it provides the opportunity for them to try out different areas. So maybe taking biology and psychology at the same time or many of the other electives that we would offer. Okay, after that, we have paralegal studies, perfect for students who would like to work in a law office or with a lawyer where they could and gather information on the skills that could be utilized in that area. We also have political science, which is focused on law and policy. So the big focus here actually in the classroom is professors will bring in current events into their classroom to help students understand the connection between current political events and also relating them to history in our country. Psychology, which is my area, 
pretty big. We have tons of electives if you are interested in that. We do have an emphasis on helping students transition to a four-year program, but of course we also want to help you with the associate's degree to get a job out there as soon as possible. So some electives include abnormal psychology and social psychology. And just one other big highlight for psychology is that we do also host an undergraduate psychology conference that is a perfect opportunity to help students build their resume and prepare them for that next step. Okay, following just a few more, we have social work, which has three main concentrations depending on what your area is, and it is mainly a focus on human services. We then have sociology, which would be to apply our guidelines from society and use that in research, counseling, government work, again, whatever your interest may be. The final major that we have is teacher education, which is probably the most robust major in behavioral and social sciences. So this could include a focus on early childhood education, special education, elementary and secondary with a focus on a certain area like math or English. So that's in total all of our majors here. The one final thing I want to mention is several of our majors in behavioral and social sciences do have a perfect transition to Towson University Northeast. So I'm going to turn it back over to Beth to continue on. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nicolette. Um, so those of you out there don't actually know that my background is psychology as well. So I'm going to take 30 seconds to to plug the fact that most research within psychology, but just sort of, you know, generally across career development says that there's a strong relationship between what interests you, what you really find fascinating in life and um, your happiness overall. So if you choose a career field that is part of that interest, you end up actually being happier in your job. There's less burnout in your job. You end up switching jobs less. And so I would encourage those of you out there to really think about what all these wonderful people are saying, maybe less in terms of a major right now and more in terms of, you know, what do you find fascinating and what is interesting to you? Is it data and numbers? Is it relationships and helping people? Because when I was starting my career, it was about being around other people and wanting to, to help. And so that could have taken me psychology. It could have taken me in healthcare. So I would just encourage you to have an open mind as, as we talk and to continue that open mind as um, Dr. Jamie Carmel, who's one of our history faculty, speaks a little bit about the interest area of, of humanities and, and communications. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Dr. Carmel. Okay, thank you, Beth. Well, to me, humanities is all about understanding the human, understanding the individual through history, through literature, through philosophy, through language, and understanding society by understanding who we are as people. So I want to read a quote that I recently found from Ronald J. Daniels, who's the president of Johns Hopkins University. And uh, President Daniels said that, quote, it is true that many employers are looking for graduates with specialized technical skills, but they also look for other capabilities. As the world is transformed by artificial intelligence, machine learning, and automation, the uniquely human qualities of creativity, imagination, discernment, and moral reasoning will be the ultimate coin of the realm. All these skills, as well as the ability to communicate clearly and persuasively, are honed in humanities courses. And so I'd like to, to begin my presentation on that note, uh, uh, understanding the importance of uh, who we are as, as people, and that's what the humanities are all about. So um, what I'd like to do now is switch over to the screen. So I have a power, PowerPoint to share here. So I'm going to flip this over right now and talk a little bit more about Harford Community College's humanities programs. So from the beginning, I think we need to understand that the humanities really is all about the human experience. And we have great programs and classes at Harvard in history, in English, in philosophy and communication studies. We have just a fabulous expert and accomplished faculty. Uh, they are uh, writers, they are published authors, they are published poets, 
they're scholars, they're historians, they're communications professionals. We have uh, many face-to-face -face online classes, uh, hybrid classes. We also have a lot of digital applications involved. We use iPads, we develop things like blogs and uh, other uh, digital applications such as uh, using uh, historical records and placing them online and making digital sense of them as exhibitions. Humanities classes and programs are wonderful as preparation for transfer and diverse careers for graduate programs of all sorts. How many people know that, for example, uh, an awesome preparation to, to, be a, to go to medical school? You could be an English major. Uh, you could be a history major and go to law school. It prepares you for careers in government, in business, in international relations, in politics, in uh, all sorts of fields. Um, we also have internships uh, in public history. So th these are uh, opportunities where students can be placed in real world historical settings and learn the craft of being a public historian. Uh, so recently interns we've had have been at the uh, Harvard Grace Maritime Museum, for example, and the Jerusalem Mill Historical Village, as well as the uh, Historic Society of Harford County. <clears throat> and that's not all. We have awesome student opportunities. We have a journalism club. We have the OWL Magazine, which I'm gonna talk about in more detail in a minute or two. The Harford Civil Rights Project, talk about that too. We have poetry slams that our students have been involved in. We have a student research conference. We have digital opportunities uh, involving d d exhibition development. We have drama opportunities. And even though drama technically falls in, or the theater is in our, uh, in our arts area, we do offer drama and we have opportunities there for students who wanna get involved in script development and production and even in acting, certainly related to the humanities. <laughs> so I wanna talk for a minute or so about HCC's OWL Magazine. The award-winning OWL Magazine, I should say, they regularly win national competitions for their productions, especially video productions. You can see this Facebook page is uh, OWL Magazine, shows the, uh, the, some of the, the hard copies, but also how active they are in a digital format. And they just do these fabulous videos and create the sense of community around the college and bring in all sorts of uh, current events and issues. They look at... Uh, politics, they look at culture, they look at cuisine, they look at uh, social and fashion trends, really a wonderful resource. And many of our students in the humanities get involved in that in different ways. And it's, it's run by Professor Claudia Brown and it really uh, just a, a great opportunity for uh, humanities students. Now I'll talk about another project that's kind of close to my heart and involved in the humanities. And this is the Harford Civil Rights Project. So this is a grant funded by the National Endowment for the Humanities. Uh, and basically we're working on student engagement in the civil rights area, looking at the, the 20th century African-American civil rights movement as it happened in Harford County and, and in the context of the national movement and 21st century movement. So really a wonderful opportunity that history students are involved in, English students are involved in, and other students. And we're creating a digital exhibition down the road. We are putting together a mobile application they get involved in oral history and research and literary analysis and, and really do some wonderful things. And um, I'm also the project director for this, very excited about it, but it's, it's just a great opportunity in our humanities. So for more information, you can get in touch with me for English history, communication studies, and for philosophy. We have our, our wonderful new uh, assistant professor, Ms. Amy Cedrone, and you can reach her as well there. Uh, so I wanna thank you very much for your Excellent. time today. Thank you, Jamie. We appreciate that sort of that broad overview of humanities and communication. So thank you. Um, I'm now going to actually turn it over to Professor LJ Baker, one of our accounting faculty, to give us a little bit of insight into the business and finance interest area. So LJ, take it away. Hi everyone, thanks so much for uh, joining this presentation. Um, so just a quick little introduction of myself. Uh, my name is LG Baker. I am uh, the, the program coordinator for the business programs at Harford Community College, including business, accounting, marketing, all that good stuff. 
Um, uh, but just just to put you at, at ease a little bit, so my background is I was actually a Harford County Public School student. Um, I graduated from Haverty Grace High School many years ago, uh, had no clue what I wanted to do with myself or my life, um, came to Harford Community College, and uh, you know I, I like to think I've been pretty successful since. Um, so I, I've been at the college as a full-time faculty member now for, this is my 15th year, believe it or not, so, um, so and, and have never left Haverty Grace. My, my family and I love it so much here. So um, we, we offer a ton of different business programs at the college um, uh, from, from transfer degrees, if you're really interested in transferring and gaining a four-year degree in whether that be accounting, marketing, business management, entrepreneurship, whatever it might be, um, then we really recommend that you take the business administration program here at Hartford Community College. Um, so the business admin program is set up as a seamless transfer to um, almost all of our four-year institutions. We have several articulation agreements in place with University of Baltimore, Towson University, uh, University of Maryland Global Campus, um, University of Maryland. So we have tons of different articulation agreements that are here uh, in order to make your transfer as seamless as possible within that business administration program. Um, within our program, we have tons of support for you as a student, whether you are a student that is um, seeking transfer or you're trying to prepare yourself for a career. Um, we have amazing career navigators in place who help get uh, uh, internships for you. Um, um, they help prepare you to uh, be a professional interviewer. All right, um, we have uh, great programs in place within Hartford County Public Schools. So if you have, uh, if if you're a parent and you have a student who's uh, still uh, a, a sophomore or a junior in high school or early or earlier, uh, we have a, a robust dual credit program in place at all of our different Hartford County Public Schools within our business program, where they can take six credits, college credits, during their senior year taught by full-time Hartford Community College faculty, but hosted within your, your, your classrooms within their high schools um, that have been extremely rewarding for those students. And they have then those credits to transfer over whether they come to Hartford or whether they go somewhere else. All right, so we're, we're, not, we're not trying to make them come to Hartford Community College. We're trying to make sure that, that they have a head start on their education, wherever that education might be. So we're extremely excited to, to, to see you at Hartford Community College. We have a, a, an award-winning faculty within our business program. We have great uh, classroom set up in order to, um, uh, you know, help those. We most of our classrooms within our BA 101 courses and accounting courses are all set up as group classrooms, tables of four students where you're constantly communicating with, with each other. We have interactive whiteboards set up, set around the room, so we have completely interactive classrooms that really allow us to really get in touch with those students and make sure that they're learning and, and applying these mis business principles well. So uh, we look forward to seeing you. Uh, as always, you can reach out to to myself. I'm at jbaker at harford you with any questions that you might have within anything within our business program. Excellent, LJ. Thank you so much for that wonderful overview. We really appreciate it. Also, your reminder that sometimes the best educational opportunities are close to home. So thank Absolutely. you for that reminder. Yeah. Um, so before actually I introduce our next presenter, I just wanted to remind everyone that there is a chat function that you can use to ask questions. We will have a question and answer portion at the end of these presentations. So we want to make sure that we are, you know, clarifying anything that you need. So please use that chat function. Um, I'm going to actually now introduce uh, David Antal. He is our coordinator for Applied Technology Programs. Going to give us some insights into applied science, technologies, and, and trades. So, David? Hello, everybody. My, as Beth said, my name is David, David Antal. I'm the coordinator of the engineering um, technology program. And by now, I'm sure your seatbelts are fat and fat, fastened because we're flying through a lot of information here. So I'll be covering engineering technology, welding, machining, and the CAD program. So I'd like to show you, um, so, uh, here we go. So when traditionally, when you think of engineering technology, you know, you, you think we should be thinking about traditional or what I call conventional uh, manufacturing. And these people are what we would normally call engineering technicians, you know, engineering assistants, helping the engineer put together ideas, you know, making them work, keeping things working on the assembly floor and production floor. It's a two-year program. And... Uh, and we, we cover a broad base of um, uh, technology in the, in, in, the, in the area. In the last two years, or three years, uh, I've been working as a pr um, principal investigator. We were awarded, the college was awarded a NSF 
ATE grant for additive manufacturing. So our grant is to develop a path, pathways from high school to industry for additive manufacturing uh, technicians. And you, I'm sure you've seen a lot of that on TV now with the 3D community printing uh, PE personal protection equipment for the health workers. So we actually have a group of four students as working uh, with me. We've developed, I mean, we've delivered PEs to Upper Chesapeake and the ARC um, Foundation. So we're developing, uh, in about a, this time last year, the state of Maryland approved our program for an additive manufacturing technician. So we have five courses that come together for a technician that, uh, for a certificate that is stackable in our AAS degree. But the exciting part, when you think about conventional manufacturing and additive manufacturing, uh, well, let me, I jumped the gun. I forgot something here. I, I wanted to go back to the, the welding and machining. So what we have done at the college is just this semester launched a pilot program, the North Star with Hartford Tech for welding machinery routing and machining. And so with, we have two credits and two courses in welding and two courses in machining. And we'll develop a program, uh, another course to again, do a stackable certificate for that. So th these will be dual credit uh, courses where high school students can um, earn high school credits and college credits, just like LJ was saying in the, the business area. So we are very excited about that. And as we put the conventional manufacturing, the additive manufacturing, they come together and they form what is now called advanced manufacturing. And that's where I think the Hartford Community College is being a lead in the area in the state of being able to put these two together and meld them into advanced manufacturing, especially support the programs that are going on in the post. The other term that you may hear a lot to drive all this is a term that we call digital thread. This all begins with forming ideas in a computer. And we do that with CAD, um, CAD or computer aided design. We have a very robust program there where many of our students earn jobs even before they graduate. And then working with industry, we also found out we were a little weak in one area, so we're building up our SolidWorks area because that really fits into our additive or 3D printing um, program. So with all that, we, you can see how this is all going together into one um, force to educate students to be um, in the manufacturing area of Hartford County. Back to you, Beth. Excellent, thank you, David, very much. Um, so now we're actually going to switch to talk a little bit about the health, wellness, and science interest area. So I'm going to ask um, the Dean for our nursing and allied health professions area, uh, Laura Preston, to, to give us some insights in this. Hello, as Beth said, I'm the Dean of Nursing and Allied Health Professions. I am a nurse. I have had a background in cancer nursing and also community health nursing. And as Beth said, the area of study concentration that I wanna call your attention to today is science, health, and wellness. And Beth talked about finding your passion and that would make you happy. So I was just wanted to go through some of the opportunities in this area and help you explore if this might be an area of interest for you. And I couldn't help myself. I had to bring up the current situation that we're under and use that to help you explore if this is the area of interest for you. So during these last several weeks, when the daily conversation has been about COVID-19, the novel coronavirus, have you found yourself fascinated by virus and the science behind it? 
a lot of us have, have been, and um, some of us have spent a lot of time talking about it because we just want to know how does the virus infect? How does the body respond? What treatments will work? If you've been thinking about these things, reading about it, wanting to know more, this might be a clue that you're interested in learning more about science, including biology, biotechnology, or chemistry. And we have programs that can help you explore these areas. If you've been more focused on healthcare workers, including the doctors, the pharmacists, the nurses, and the paramedics that are being featured, really they're being called heroes of our time, then maybe you would like to learn more about what academic programs of study for these careers look like. Maybe you're more interested in how this virus is spreading through the community, and you wanna understand why some states and some zip codes have more people infected than others. In that case, maybe you want to learn about communities, the environment, and the interactions between them. We have programs of studies and courses that can help you learn about these things. If you find yourself interested in how people can stay well and healthy during the stressful time, then maybe you'd like to explore courses of study that include community health, promotion, or even exercise science. Whether you think you may be interested in researching topics that involve science in the human body, or want to give a hands-on kind of care once you have strong knowledge base, the courses of study around science, health, and wellness may be worth exploring. And there's lots of us on campus that can help you do that. So I hope you send your questions in so we can get into more detail. De Beth, you're back. Excellent, yes, thank you, Laura. I appreciate so much, you know, you using the context of what's happening right now to really help us understand. Sort of, you know, right, is, is this the person's passion to go into that type of field? So thank you for that. Um, uh, we're going to take a moment now to talk a little bit about the arts as an interest area. So I'm going to ask Professor Jeff Ball, who is an art historian, to share a little bit about what that means. Hello, everybody. Thank you for taking time out of your busy days to uh, join us on this on this uh, meeting. Um, I am um, uh, an associate professor of art history. I've been at, at uh, Harford for eight years now, so I am the opposite of LJ in the sense that I came from outside, didn't know anything about the school until I got here. And once I got here, found out this was, uh, this was my new home in, in, in multiple senses of, of, of what that means. Um, I teach art history and I am part of the art and design component of the arts program. And just want to give you a quick overview of the program itself, some of the opportunities therein. Uh, we offer four main areas in the arts. Uh, studio, uh, uh, visual arts and applied arts is one area, art and design. Uh, we have a mass communication program with a couple different areas, a theater uh, program with, a, with three different tracks, and a uh, uh, very robust music program uh, that, that like most of our programs, extends well beyond just the academic and classroom components of, of these programs. Um, <clears throat> we also have a, uh, a, a relatively new, couple years now, program that links all these together in, and for those interested in professional careers in arts management uh, as well. Um, so just for, for each of these very briefly, the mass communication uh, program. We, we offer uh, two different sort of focuses there. One is in uh, journalism and new media. That's where the Owls Magazine uh, comes from, for instance, as part of that program and the professor that leads it. We also have another component, which is production and uh, announcing. So the newscasters, the, the people running the cameras, uh, audio boards, all those things are part of that, that program. Uh, in theater, we have uh, three areas one, uh, that focus on 
you could you could have a focus in acting, you could have a focus in stage design and production, or uh, a more uh, general sense of just the technical aspects of, of theater production in general uh, as areas. Um, the visual and design, uh, sorry, the visual arts, we have uh, four main areas, photography, traditional studio art, painting, sculpture, those kinds of things. Uh, the digital arts and graphic design are our four main tracks. Um, and um, the big, uh, and in music we have, um, there's, there's one, one pathway through that, but we have a, a huge amount of opportunities there that for majors and non-majors uh, for you to explore um, the creative side, your creative side to, to think about careers in the arts through that as well. And in the music areas, we have traditional, the traditional music classrooms you would find, um, uh, but also op many opportunities for individual lessons in, in learning an instrument or being part of ensembles for orchestras, choral groups, um etc cetera, etc cetera. um all of the uh, most of these majors have components that m many of our majors pretty much all of our majors are transfer degrees and many of those are connected with um uh, uh, education so arts education music education etc uh with a large component of, of transfer going over to towson uh as well um we have uh, uh our biggest um, one of the things that, it, that I was stunned by when I came here a, after being at several schools uh, throughout my career was the high level of not just the faculty, but also the facilities and the equipment that is available. We have studios and, and um, electronic suites and uh, performance spaces, uh, spaces that are as good as any four-year college that I've been at. Uh, throughout my career, for instance, and we often get that comment from from other faculty from other campuses that may be visiting who are kind of stunned that we are able to offer this level of of access uh, and training that is part of of being uh, in the arts in all of its variations. Lastly, I'll mention we have many opportunities for you to show your your artistic production. Um, whether that be acting in um, student and exteriorly run uh, performances and plays, uh, whether that is performing in public and as parts of groups or soloists, um, um, working for the OWL magazine and having your material published directly. OWL magazine is, is run almost completely by the students, including the, the chief editor is always a student in, in OWL magazine, for instance. And in the visual arts, we have several exhibition opportunities for you as a student uh, that that culminates every year in the annual student exhibition, which is uh, a, a, an exhibition chosen by an outside adjudicator uh, to as a true measure of your progress and, and growth as an artist. Uh, along those lines, we also have, uh, as part of our permanent collection on campus, we have a gallery of work that is just student work that we buy from that exhibition. And, and as a permanent feature of highlighting your work and your legacy while you were a student here in uh, at Hartford Community College. So especially when the, when the school's back open and we have full access again in a regular way, uh, we invite you to come visit us and, 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 and meet the, the faculty and see some of these spaces that we have offered for you. So back to Beth. Excellent. Well, Jeff, I have a quick question for you before you go. Do you think okay. that I have a Do you think I have a future in production and um, announcing potentially? Well, I don't know. Maybe in the future. But a few classes, we have some people yeah. we can work with. We'll see. We'll see. So in the meantime, I'm actually going to ask Chris Jones, one of our math faculty, um, as well as TJ, one of our honor students, to speak a little bit about that program. Give us some insights into what it means to be part of the honors program at Harford. Hi everybody, I'm Chris Jones. I'm the coordinator for the honors program, just like Beth said, um, and hopefully TJ's on here. I'm not sure if he's on yet, but can you hear um, me? I wanted to talk. Oh, great, I can hear you, great. So, okay, cool. um, yeah, TJ's our honors student council president, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about the honors program and talk to you what it entails, and if you're interested in that, some contact information. So it doesn't matter what your major is. 
um, no matter what you are, what to the fabulous programs that you're interested in at Harper Community College, the honors program is an option for everybody. And so within our honors program, uh, the main thing that we talk about with respect to the honors program is the students. The students are really at the heart of what the honors program is. And we love to have our students talk to us about ideas for the curriculum, um, for opportunities for internships, opportunities for experiential learning, whatever it might be. Um, we tie in the ideas of being a global citizen into our honors program. We talk about the ideas of service learning and leadership being incorporated into the honors program as well. Um, along with the honors program, we do have some scholarship opportunities. When we talk about in-house opportunities, there's some opportunities for you to get a scholarship at Harford while you're in the honors program. So if you get an A or a B in one of our honors courses, we'll pay the tuition for your next honors course. And we'll do that for up to two classes. Um, and there's some also some guaranteed transfer articulations that we have. So for instance, if you wanna to transfer to Towson University, there's $1,250 an annual renewable scholarship if you transfer from our honors program to their honors program. Um, UMBC, we just signed an articulation with UMBC and they have an articulation for $4,000 if you get a 3.7 or better in our honors program and complete. Goucher College and there's other institutions as well. So um, one of the things that I wanted to talk about really quickly as well with respect to other things you'll get out of the honors program is we do have smaller class sizes. So our class sizes cap out at about 15, as opposed to generally our classes at Harvard cap out at about 30. Um, you do have a little bit more contact with your instructors and you do engage in research opportunities, these sort of transferable skills that you're gonna hone for the rest of your life. So for those of you that are thinking of getting your bachelor's, master's, even PhD types of degrees, those sorts of things are gonna be available to you when you move on to your next institution. I want to give um, TJ a few minutes just to talk about some of um, the opportunities that you might have from a student perspective. So TJ, please. TJ, can you turn on right, your so, webcam too so we can see you? Uh, yes, I've tried to do that. I can't figure out how to do it on my phone. Oh, I'm not sure if you can on your phone. Okay, but we can hear you then. All right, sounds good. So if you're wondering what you'll get out of the honors program, uh, there, there's quite a bit. So one of these things is recognition. And one form of recognition that it allows you is uh, your, on your transcript, the honors courses that you take are designated as honors. And how this helps you is it makes you stand out in any of the competitive uh, application processes that you'll inevitably be, uh, inevitably be going through uh, in your throughout your uh, academic career, whether it be to uh, transfer to your next school or apply for internships or even scholarships. So it's very valuable to have honors courses on your transcript. And some other opportunities that exist with the honors program uh, include a diverse selection of events that focus on community outreach. For, for instance, we have uh, an adopt a road activity that we do where we go and clean up the environment. Uh, it's in a in a location fairly close to the college. And also we have events that focus on organic intellectual stimulation, sort of. So, so what I mean by that is through these events, you're not just in a classroom looking at a book, but you're out in the real world experiencing things that will, they, where you're just, absorbing a better understanding of the world, essentially. So for instance, we went to New York City in the fall semester of 2019, and we went to the 9-11 Museum and Memorial. And that that's a site where a very significant event in US history occurred. And just going there, there's a wealth of knowledge that you can just pick up in a, in a very, in a very organic fashion. Um, and aside from those, the leadership opportunities are some of the most important uh, opportunities that we offer through the honors program. Um, we have an honors student council, which is a small group of students that plans and executes the events that I was just talking about, as well as maintains and improves the, the list of honors courses that we offer. And 
you can get involved with the honor student council you can come to our meetings uh and you can give your input you can help us spearhead the initiatives that we that we do for instance we have a uh we have a program called hands which is in short it's a mentorship it's a mentorship program for new students or students who are unfamiliar with the software programs that are necessary for for academic success at harford for instance alnet blackboard degreeworks those types of things we realized that it was a big problem a lot of people are unfamiliar with those softwares and we thought it would be a good idea to help them so that it doesn't impede their their learning process um, so that's just one of the things, but you can help us get in, uh, you can get get involved with the leadership activities that we engage in and it, it'll be a, a great service to you as well, because just like the designated honors programs on your transcript, it will help you stand out and it will show that you're capable of leadership. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, Chris and TJ so much. And Chris, just as a reminder, oh, wonderful pictures. <laughs> This is a reminder you can stop sharing your screen as we move forward, because um, right now we're actually going to switch a little bit to talking about um, transfer from Harford and the articulation agreements we have with other institutions. So I'm going to ask George Budelis, one of our academic advisors, and Allison Amato, our coordinator for curriculum and programs, to, to talk a little bit about that. Hello. Um, first, I just wanted to. First, I just wanted to welcome all of you. Um, I'm excited to have all of you listening in today, and we here in Academic Advising um, look forward to the day where you're on campus and you're coming to see us, but we want to make sure you know that we are still seeing students by phone appointments, online chat, virtual appointments, so we're still functioning every day to help serve you. Um, when you start at Harford, you will be assigned an Academic Advisor from day one from connection all the way through to completion. So you'll work with the same academic advisor all the way through your time at Hartford. As Jeff Ball, one of the professors mentioned, um, he mentioned our beautiful campus. And when all this terrible stuff with COVID goes away and we're all back to normal, I really look forward to the day where you can come around and look at our great campus and we can do open houses again. <laughs> Campus. And, and like Jeff said, I've been to numerous campuses and by far Hartford is one of the most beautiful campuses that I've ever, mm -hmm. been, ever been on. With that being said, I'd also like to let you know, um, as Dr. Sherwood said, um, we want to talk a little bit about transfer and our courses here are designed to transfer and, and not only to Maryland schools, but to schools all over the country. We have students that transfer to any school that you could possibly imagine. And one of the things I want to show you is a system that we use here called Artsis. And Artsis, can you see my, I hope you guys can see my screen now, um, is a system that is designed to show you exactly how a course can transfer from Harford. Or, and it's really designed for all Maryland community colleges, but obviously I'm going to show you how it works from Harford. So our, I'm going to use Towson as our example today. And I'm going to show you how a course you can type in. Our psychology course is Psych 101. And if I hit go, it's going to show me exactly how that course transfers. It shows me that it goes in as Psych 101 at Towson and that it meets a behavioral social science at Towson. And I could do this for multiple institutions and multiple um, schools. So I can look at anything I want to and see how it transfers before I take the course. Also, if you're not sure how something is transferring, you're not sure how a program is going to transfer, make sure you work with your academic advisors. We're here to help you with uh, making sure that your courses work, with course selection, with um, getting information about your degree or your program and things of that. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Allison to talk a little bit more about um, your articulation agreements that we have. Thanks, George. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to talk to you about articulation agreements, which um, I know Chris um, just mentioned earlier when he was uh, speaking about the honors program. So articulation, uh, that might not be a term that you're familiar with, but here uh, articulation agreement is a formal agreement that we have with partner uh, institutions, so co other colleges and universities. Um, and that agreement helps us 
transfer your courses more seamlessly by outlining uh, the, sort of the course to course um, the course to course uh, course mapping you should be following. Um, so for example, if I'm a student who is studying psychology at Harvard and I know along the way that I want to transfer to say Towson, um, I would follow the articulation agreement that Harvard has with Towson University so that I can make sure I'm not only satisfying the requirements that Harvard, but I'm also satisfying um, the requirements at Towson and that way I'm not losing any time or money, which we all like, um, and I am not repeating any coursework. So you um, will see George right now is showing you the articulation webpage we have on the Harvard Community College website, and there are quite a few there. Um, you'll see that there are two main types of articulations we have. Um, one is what we call a transfer partnership, and that's a more general agreement that we have with um, colleges and universities um, that say you uh, finish at Harvard and you transfer into a similar program, um, then um, those first two years are going to be counted as totally satisfied. Um, transfer partnerships also usually come with some sort of um, benefit like uh, tuition um, discounts. Um, a lot of times they come with the possibility of merit scholarships. We have also what we call two plus two agreements and two plus twos are our most common agreements. Um, so two plus twos are more tailored than transfer partnerships are and they focus on program to program articulation by mapping out course to course transfers. So again, if you go back to the example of a, being a psychology student transferring to Towson, I would follow that agreement um, to make sure that I'm taking all of those courses at Harvard that I would need in order to transfer um, and maximize my time at Harvard um, at Towson. Um, we have 25 partner colleges and universities. Um, six of them are online, so you might see something like Drexel, Drexel University Online or University of Maryland Global Campus, which used to be um, UMUC. Uh, we have seven out of state partner institutions. Uh, College of Pennsylvania might be less familiar. Um, a new one that we have is the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts. Um, that's an exciting one. Um, and many others. We also have 12 in-state um, partnerships with public and private colleges and universities. So Towson University, University of Baltimore, um, University of Maryland, Baltimore County, um, Stevenson University, many more. Um, we are always working on developing new partnerships with colleges and universities, uh, as well as partnerships with um, our program to program transfers. So. Um, you can find more information about those on the website. Excellent, thank you so much, Allison. Um, we're just gonna take a, a brief pause. I'm gonna give everyone just a moment or two actually to respond to the poll that was just put in the navigation pane. So you'll see in your GoToWebinar um, pane there, um, if students on the call would like to, to answer the poll, it is, have you decided on a major? So we'll just take a moment or two, give everyone a chance to answer. Okay, so thank you all for for those who um, who gave their response. We have one final panelist before we go to our question and answer. So I'm going to ask Lindsay Robinson, who is an academic program manager at Towson University Northeast, or what we affectionately call TUNE, to to talk a little bit about opportunities there. 
Hi, thank you. Um, so my name is Lindsay Robinson. I work for Towson University, Northeastern Maryland. As Beth said, we refer to ourselves as TUNE. Um, so we are Towson University, but right across the street from Hartford Community College. Our building was built about six years ago in partnership with HCC, um, just to be able to streamline that transfer process for you even more so um, by remaining in your community. So um, we currently have nine different majors available for you to transfer into um, and the way that works is you first complete the associate degree at the community college in the respective major and then you can come to us to finish up those two years so as Allison was mentioning earlier the two plus two partnerships were the second part of that too um, so we have business administration communication studies early childhood with special education elementary with special education family and human services information technology nursing, psychology, and our criminal justice program. So lots of opportunities for you to be able to complete a four-year degree while staying here in Harford County. Um, and I'm going to be having a conversation um, a little bit later this evening at 6.30 to talk a little bit more in depth about TUNE, so I'd love for you to join me there. Back to you, Beth. Excellent. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Um, so we have uh, an opportunity now for the last, let's say, you know, 15 minutes or so to answer the questions that you posed. So I'm actually going to start, um, Jeff Ball, if you could um, speak to two of these questions here. So I'm going to ask you to come on screen in, for a moment. Um, we had two around theater. And so the first one is, um, do theater sure. students get involved with the community productions held at HCC? And if so, how soon in their career at Harvard? So is it immediately or is it later on? And then how does a person go about getting involved in um, stage crew and production design? Okay, good questions. Um, the answer is immediately uh, and easily. <laughs> um, you, um, the nature of the program is the minute you start taking classes in the theater areas, um, you are connected with performances that are underway, whether they are be they are internal to the theater program itself, or whether they are some other productions, not all of them, but some of the ones that come through the Chesapeake Center and the theater uh, in, the Ch in the Chesapeake Center. Uh, that is actually getting, there's actually going to be an even closer integration of the professional groups that come through and the, and, and, and the academic uh, theater side uh, down the road um, as things get worked out between them. Uh, the the uh, There is a, a, a theater uh, student organization that always produce, uh, puts together productions, uh, small and large scale. We have a black box theater that's in the, the main arts building, which is Joppa Hall, uh, in addition to the main theater space over in Chesapeake. Um, you can work on plays at any point in your career. You don't even have to be in a class uh, to be uh, to get involved in the theater production, uh, whether that's working behind the scenes in the production side or um, uh, taking a, 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 um, trying to be an actor within productions as well. Um, so quickly and easily, just to summarize uh, those access points for you. Excellent. All right, there I am. Thank you so much, Jeff. I appreciate that. Um, I'm hoping now LJ Baker, Professor Baker, can come back on screen for us and, and tell us a little bit more about um, cyber programs. So a question came in about, you know, sort of generally speaking, what are opportunities within cyber? Um, sure, sure. So cyber doesn't fall technically under my area, but it's in my academic division. So um, I, I do uh, know some information about the program and have gathered some more. So um, uh, the, the cyber program that we have at HCC is recognized by the NSA and the Department of Homeland Security. Uh, Harford Community College is considered uh, a center of excellence. Um, we offer both credit and non-credit programs that are aligned to industry certifications. And many current certifications, if you already have a certification in something, can actually count towards credit within the program. We kind of do a reverse transfer transfer of those certifications for credit. Um, if the, the, the degree technically is a prepare for work degree, and there are many entry level positions available uh, at APG through defense contractors, as well as private sector, um, and the, the degree can be completed in 17 months, 
We also have articulation agreements in place though. So if you're interested in transferring your cybersecurity degree to uh, continue to get a bachelor's degree or further, um, we have articulation agreements in place with Towson University, with University of Maryland Global Campus, as well as Capital Technical University. Um, and if, if you want some more specific information, um, program details, different stuff like that, then you can reach out to the program coordinator for computer science, um, I'm sorry, for uh, cybersecurity, and his name is David Law, and you can reach him at dlaw, D-L-A-W, at harford.edu. Can I, LJ, can I ask you to stay around for a moment? Sure. So another question did in fact come in, um, right. so it's, you know, it's on the spot, here you go. Will the HCC business courses that I'm taking in high school transfer? Uh, they absolutely should transfer, um, especially within state institutions. Um, so the, the the high school course pathways that, that we chose, the courses that you're taking within, were the most easily transferable courses. So whether it was BA 101, Intro to Business, into Marketing, BA 203, or it was Accounting 101 into Accounting 102, those, cho those courses were specifically chosen because those are the courses that transfer most easily, no matter which institution you're going to. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Um, I'm hoping uh, Chris Jones, can you join me up here in the hot seat? Indeed. Excellent. So just generally, if you could give us a high level overview of the requirements for the honors program, specifically focusing on GPA and how a person can get and stay in the program. Sure, no problem. So if you have a 3.2 or better GPA from high school unweighted, that grants you automatic admission to the honors program. Or if you're a Harford Community College student, let's say um, you've got nine credits and you've got a 3.2 better or better GPA, that grants you automatic admission to the honors program as well. And then to stay in the honors program, you have to have a 3.2 or better GPA. Um, to complete the honors program, you'd have to take three of our honors courses. Excellent, thank you so much. Sure. Um, Dean Laura Preston, can you join me? We have a question about the nursing program. Yeah. Here I am. There you go. Can I complete the nursing degree in two years? It will be difficult. It usually takes at least five semesters. That would be the minimum it could take you. A lot of times, you know, you've heard a lot about the Towson, the tune um, articulation that we have. In nursing, we have um, a very we have, we have an associate to bachelor's degree. So a lot of our nursing students, about half of them enroll at, in Harford's nursing program and, and at Towson at the same time and get their bachelor's degree about one semester after they finish their nursing program at Harford. So some, some um, nursing students actually try to get most of their coursework done so they can do this dual enrollment with Towson and then finish up their bachelor's degree. But I would say the minimum time that you could complete your degree would be five semesters. Five semesters, excellent, thank you. Sure. Um, we have a question, this one is about psychology, so I'm going to ask Nicolette to come on screen and then there's sort of a transfer component, so if I could ask George to come back as well. You there, George? There we yes. go. Okay, so it's a two-parter. If a student is interested in psychology, what is the best road to take? So Nicolette, I'll throw that to you. And then, and will my general education courses transfer to a college in Florida like Valencia? All right, so I'll start off. So if you're interested in psychology, um, I would suggest trying to figure out which specific area of psychology you would be most interested in. It is pretty large, so there's a lot of different options. The best way to find out would definitely be to take the different electives that would be offered at Harford, such as abnormal psychology or social psychology to feel the waters and see where you gravitate towards most. So I'll pass that back to George now. So I, I would say the, the same thing. I would follow the degree at Harford and finish the degree at Harford. And the great thing about psychology is there's usually so much room for electives when you transfer that even if some of our general education courses do not match the exact general education courses at Valencia, they'll work as some of your free electives. But to answer the question directly, we would have to look at the requirements at Valencia and see how the general education requirements at Harford are matched up with the general education requirements there. 
And what we'll do in advising is we'll make sure that we advise you to take the specific courses that work for your psych major that also work in transfer because we have room for electives in our major as well, as you mentioned earlier in your presentation. Perfect, thank you both. Um, Dean Laura Preston, can you come back on for just a moment? Here I am. Okay, so do we offer LPN classes? Um, so I see LPN to RN, but not just LPN. Right, we do not offer LPN classes. We do have an LPN to RN transfer option, so, but um, not the LPN program. And not just standalone. Okay. Um, so those, that is the totality of questions that I have. Can I ask either uh, Cynthia, Kelly, or Evo to confirm that we don't have any other questions? Um, we do have one here, Beth. Okay. That, is there an online tool to use to show articulation to institutions outside of Maryland? So that would probably be Allison or George. Yeah, Allison, if you could come back up and, and, and talk through that one, that'd be great. Sure, uh, okay, there I am. Um, so for out of state, there isn't anything like ARTSIS. Um, the best bet would be to check with the uh, institution that you're planning on transferring to, uh, to see a lot of them have tools on their, it's usually in registration and records um, on their website, where you can look at the different courses um, by college. So if you would go on there and you find Harvard um, and you, it would generate a list of courses that could transfer. Um, if you don't find anything there, you could work with us to uh, also work with the university or college to, uh, to basically evaluate the courses at Harvard um, with their course requirements. All right. Thank you. So we are we are very close to our 515 end time. I want to thank Dr. Tim Sherwood for opening it up for us and for all of the panelists for talking with us about interest areas across Harvard and opportunities like the honors program and articulation agreements and transfer. I do want to remind everyone that this session was recorded and will be available at harford.edu slash learn more and learn more is all one word. Um, so we appreciate the time that you spent with us today and we hope to see you at Harford.